back to my browser. I'm going to go back to the query capability um, section of the service provider. I'll stop scrolling here in just a second. Sorry about that. So here's the query capability again um, in the service provider. So the first thing I'm going to do is just go to this query base <coughs> URL. And by default, what happens if you go to the query base URL is you're basically saying, you know, I would like all of those resources. Uh, implementations may choose to, to do paging or have some implementation specific limits on the number of things returned, but the, the default semantic is if I go to the query base and I don't provide any other information, I want to retrieve you know, all of the resources. So I'm going to go ahead. Again, I have um, application RDFXML as my accept core version of 2.0. So I'm going to send this request with a get. And what I get back is maybe not what you would expect. So instead of getting back all of the details of each of the work items, what I'm actually getting back here is a reference to each of the work items. So this is something that's also um, implementation, uh, an implementation choice. Let me call it that. So uh, an implementation could, when you when you hit a query, uh, you when you perform a query, it may choose to return a, a reference to the resource, or it may ch choose to return the resource in line. So an example of a difference is, you know, our, we can see from Rational Team Concert here, it's returning um, references to change requests when I run this, when I hit the query base. If I was using the Rational Quality Manager product and I hit the query base for one of its resources, it actually would return all of the resources in line. So that's something that, um, as a consumer of these services, you need to be prepared for. If you get back um, an RDF resource, a reference, you need to follow that up with a subsequent get to actually get that resource. So if I wanted the details of this first work item here, I would actually perform a second get to go off and pull you know, all of the details of that resource. You can see there's many, many attributes here for this resource. Some of them are you know, in the OSLC change management um, namespace. Other ones are in RTC specific namespaces. So OSLC <coughs> artifacts can, you know, when, when you get them, they can have a mixture of you know, both the OSLC attributes as well as implementation specific attributes. You, know, you can use the OSLC specifications. I can use the OSLC change management specification to um, you know, determine what each of the OSLC um, attributes means, what it relates to, and you know, which ones are required. Which ones should I, as a consumer, should I expect to be able to see? Um, other ones may be optional. They may or may not be there. And the OSLC, each of the OSLC domain specs, as well as the resource shapes, calls out uh, you know, the, the cardinality of each of the attributes, whether they're guaranteed to be there or whether they're optionally there, um, if they're there more than once. So the spec is sort of your guide to uh, what you should expect to see. And then for, for the extended attributes, for the ones that you see here, like these RTC CM planned for, this one that I have highlighted right here, you would have to consult with the, the implementation or just by experimenting like we're doing here, um, you know, determine what you would expect to see uh, for each of the implementations. So this is, you know, this is what the, um, the actual change request looks like. And, and again, I, after I did the query, I got a reference to this guy, and then I did a, another get. I followed up with another get to actually um, to get it, the details of it. I'm going to go back to my history to that previous query. So again, this is the, the query base again. Um, one thing OSLC provides is uh, the ability to page query results. So if it was a you know a huge number of of results for the query, you know hundreds of thousands perhaps, the implementation might uh, I could requ explicitly request paging of it, or the implementation could um, choose to page the results. So I just wanted to show a quick example of what that would look like. So I can say OSLC paging equals true, and I'm going to say, actually, I've got it right here. I'm just going to select that one. And the page size is 20. So if I send the request like this, 
the result that I get back are, you know, 20 of the items. Up here I can see that the total count is 86, so I know there's more out there. And I also have this attribute right here in the query result called next page that tells me the URL that I should go to in order to get the next, you know, the next set of results in this query. Um, we are working, I'll, I'll mention this a couple times during the presentation, um, we're working on some contributions to the Eclipse Leo project to, you know, help consume OSLC services, to run queries, to page through query results, and to um, convert the query, the, the artifacts and the query results to Java objects. So I'll, I'll talk a little bit more about that as we, as we go along. But um, that's one plug for it is it can help you with, it's going to be able to help you with paging through query result sets. <coughs> Excuse me. So uh, another common scenario is uh, that I want to be able to filter the results. I don't want all of them. That's not useful to me. So, you know, one potential thing that I might want to do is, you know, just show me all of the change requests that uh, that are not in a closed state. So I, I add an additional, I add a parameter here to my query that says uh, OSLC dot where the closed attribute is false. So this will show me all of my um, my change requests that are in uh, an open state, a non-closed state. So if I send that request, uh, you can see from the the count that you know 61 of those 86 are are not in a closed state, and the other common scenario, in addition to having where clauses, so where, where is for filtering, for getting a subset of the, the number of artifacts, is being able to do a, a select. I don't, I don't want all of the properties, or instead of a reference, give me, give me some subset of the properties for that resource, or for each of the resources in the query result. So I'm going to put up a select statement here. Let me paste it, and then I'll talk about it. So. I added an additional statement here that says, you know, so OSLC where closed is false. Now I've added a select statement that says, just give me back the identifier, the title, the type of the change request, the status, and in this case, DC Terms contributor is the, the owner of it. So if I send the request like this, what comes back instead of just the reference, I still have the references here to each of the, the work items in the result. But I also have those attributes that I requested in the select statement. So using the combination of the where statement um, and the select statement, you can do filtering on you know, which artifacts are in your query result, as well as uh, which properties of those artifacts get returned back to you. There's a, um, if you go to the OSLC core specification, there's an excellent um, Sub document of it on OSLC query on how to use the um, the syntax of OSLC query to do all sorts of stuff like this. There's you know more sophisticated compound statements that you can do more than I'm doing here. I just wanted to give a flavor of you know what it looks like issuing these queries in the browser and you know what to expect in the results. <clears throat> 